Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm actually going to be answering a couple of questions that have come up in the comments of some of my videos recently. One of the big ones being like what colors do I actually need for my watercolor palette? Now if you've seen some of my past videos I made one filling up this palette originally um, which has since been refilled with different colors but I'll link it above if you have not seen it. I go through a little bit about like why I'm picking some of the colors but to Someone, if you're someone that like isn't super into watercolor or hasn't been painting for very long, seeing this many colors in one spot probably feels really intimidating and I know that feeling all too well. Colors are a lot of fun but you don't have to spend a ton of money and get all the fancy colors. So I'm going to go through like the basic colors of what I think that every beginner watercolorist or even somebody coming from a different medium and heading into watercolors um, should have or should consider getting. Again, this is not going to be like the most extensive information heavy video ever. This is just like my personal recommendations and what I recommend to people that ask me about it. So I just wanted to throw that out there real quick. So let's get started with some of my recommendations for a watercolor palette. So I usually recommend first off like the big thing to people is to have a warm color and a cool color of every primary. So that is a cool red and a warm red, a cool blue and a warm blue, a cool yellow and a warm yellow. And then in addition to that, I also recommend having at least two neutral colors. And what I mean by that is usually like a uh, neutral tinge or an a burnt sienna or some kind of brown tone, like a brown neutral, and then something that leans kind of more towards a black. And the two that I do highly recommend that I use a lot is um, Daniel Smith's Neutral Tint. I really like Daniel Smith's, but again, a lot of brands have a neutral tint, and sometimes it's just a mix of a couple different pigments, usually like a blue and a red, or uh, a black and a blue, you know, it kind of leans more towards the blue end or purple end or red end, depending on the brand as well, and what's in it. But I like using a neutral tint because it's very nice instead of just a straight black color to to actually tone down colors and for beginners I find that either they get like too vibrant and way too punchy with colors if they're going for more of a realistic style and they don't know how to tone them down without getting absolute mud <laughs> and what I mean by mud is like when you're mixing colors and they get really dull and they get really like brown or lean, start leaning towards black um, when you just want some nice clean mixes so I definitely do recommend that and then I also recommend a, a burnt sienna is like my go-to brown neutral for no matter what kind of, of subjects you're painting. And I like burnt sienna because depending on like what brand and what pigment it is, um, and generally they're usually about the same pigment, which is kind of nice, but they it's just a very nice versatile brown. It's not too cool. It's not too warm. Um, some people not, and some brands, I guess, do have like a more warmer, cooler tone. But in general, you can't go wrong with a good burnt sienna. And I also like burnt sienna because if I want to mix darks, there are lots of things that I can do with this to really extend a palette color range. So a lot of the paints that I have here kind of laid out um, may look a little bit familiar if you were on my channel before. Um, this is actually, these little tubes here, except for this guy, are part of Daniel Smith's primary set. And I had purchased this with the intent to experiment with the range of colors that Daniel Smith has in their primary set because I've heard awesome things about it. But if you want to see the initial impressions and swatching video of that, I'll link that up in the cards be above below above you know where it is this set I really do like there are a couple things that I've definitely played with and adjusted since then but the reason why I wanted to pull it in this video is because this is a pretty darn affordable set if you're just getting into watercolor and as I said in like my first video there's so many good mixes you can get with this like you can get really bright mixes you can get some nice darks you can even neutralize this pretty much so I'm gonna go off and explain why I like this set so this set literally is a warm and cool of each color. So I have a warm yellow, which in this particular set is the new Gamboge. And then I have a cool, very bright lemony yellow, um, which is Hansa Yellow Light. And I do really love this yellow. So that already, that already those two colors alone give me a really nice range to work with for mixing greens and for just using straight yellows. 
And then the blues, the blue selection in this set was really interesting, but what I usually do recommend is actually a ultramarine blue. And this is in this particular set, it's a French ultramarine, so it's a little bit warmer, which is it, which is fine. It's a fantastic blue, but it's an ultramarine. And then a fallow, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but I for beginners especially, fallow can be a love or hate color for a lot of people, and they don't typically use it in most of my palettes now. Um, just because I, in my particular work, like I don't, I don't just need a punchy cool blue, but I do consider this a cool blue. The reason that I recommend this color or like a, a phthalo blue, they have like different shades. And for example, the Daniel Smith set here has the green shade, which I do prefer um, for mixing because it gives you a little more flexibility. But a general like phthalo blue, not a phthalo turquoise or a phthalo like cobalt mixture, just a phthalo blue or, or you know, even a red shade would work as well, but I would recommend a green shade or uh, sometimes their label is actually these blue shades, so keep an eye out for that. And the reason why, again, is that this can give you a lot of fun color mixes, and as you're getting started and you're really not sure like what colors you like yet, it's just a nice one to experiment with. And then this set has a very interesting selection of reds, and I'm going to explain why I like and dislike this for beginners. Um, I'm going to start with the cool one. This is quinacridone rose, and quinacridones are a range of pigments that are very bright. They are very <laughs> high tinting strength um, for the most part, and they're gorgeous colors, but they tend to be a little unwieldy to learn how to mix with, especially if you're getting started. So as much as I do love this set, if you were buying individual paints and not a set of paints, I would actually recommend a, a lizard and crimson um, ideally a permanent Lizard and Crimson because the traditional pigment for Lizard and Crimson is not light fast. But again, if you're a beginner, if that is something that doesn't bother you, definitely just go get a, a tube of Lizard and Crimson. It's not going to be a make or break it. But if you want to actually hang and frame some of your artwork, I do recommend against it just because of that. But I do like it because, and this is a um, permanent alizarin in one of these, maybe. <laughs> it's been a while. But I do like alizarin because it's a super easy to learn color as far as your color mixing. It'll give you, in the permanent version as well, even though it's not the same pigment, it does act very similarly because it's formulated to be a permanent version of it. Uh, it's just fantastic. So I definitely do recommend that. And then the warm red that's included in this set is um, Pyrrole Scarlet, which is actually a red that I wasn't expecting to like, but I really do. And the reason that you want, you know, a nice, very, very punchy warm red, like almost leaning towards orange basically is what that means, is because this is going to really give you a lot of the mixes that you're going to want to get, especially if you're trying to really save some money and only get a couple colors. It's just one that I do highly recommend. So I have some of these colors here. <laughs> I have this set here, but I'm also going to actually take out this color. This is an additional color that I actually brought in that I will mention real quick. This is Quinacridone Red. And Quinacridone Red, and this is the M. Graham brand, um, is actually a cool red that sometimes I will actually substitute for this quinacridone rose because it's a little more in my comfort zone. It leans not towards a lizard, but it's like a very transparent, brighter um, version. So quinacridone red is another color that you can use as like a substitute for like your cool red if you happen to come across it or like it. So for this experiment, I'm going to go ahead and add um, Daniel Smith Neutral Tint and Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna to this palette. So as you can see, I have a warm and cool blue, I have a warm and cool red, and a warm and cool yellow, and I have them laid out that way. And I do recommend, no matter what medium you're in, to lay out your paints in a way that makes sense. And for me, going from warm to cool in sequence kind of makes it really easy for me to figure out my colors. I'm also going to go against what I said a little bit, and I might pop in a lamp black um, just to neutralize some things, but also to show you like the range of colors you can get with the black involved as well. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pop him in here. So you may be looking at this setup and being like, there's no way that's enough colors. And I'm gonna show you <laughs> next that it is plenty of colors. So first, let me go ahead and just do a quick swatch of each of these colors. So this is my cool yellow here, and then my warm yellow. My cool, and this is the quinacridone um, rose, and you can see how like it's gorgeous, but it's very punchy and it's a little like in your face just a little bit. The pyro scarlet, very pretty, and then this is the the phalo green shade, very intense, very punchy color. And then this is the French Ultramarine, which is a bit warmer than like your regular Ultramarine Blue. So you can see, obviously, that there's no green in this, in this palette at all. But I'm going to show you real quick how I can take these colors and give you some green mixes. So if I want a super, super punchy, like tropical green, how can I get that with this palette? And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take the Hansi Yellow Light, take that over to my mixing area here, and I'm gonna take the Phalo Blue Green shade and immediately look at that beautiful like tealy, tealy green blue color. I'm gonna add a bit more of the has a yellow light, and look at that beautiful green. That's beautiful. It's very vibrant, very punchy. But say that I want to do some outdoor planner painting and I don't want my landscape to look like a Kelly green, tropical green, because it's just, it's not what I see in the landscape. And this is a problem that I run into as a planner painter. So I'm actually gonna try to take the new Gamboge, which is the warm yellow in this palette, I'm gonna quickly pop in some of the, the phalo blue green shade and I'm gonna show you what that makes. Now this makes a little bit of a toned down green, just a little bit um, more toned down, but it still looks like kind of bright. So I'm actually gonna take the new Gamboge and I'm gonna mix a little bit of my French Ultramarine in And now look at this green. This is leaning more towards like an earthy brown light color, just a 10. So you can see there are two like really good options for mixing greens, but also I'm gonna go ahead and do something a little funky and I'm gonna take the Alt French Ultramarine. Yeah, look at that. The French Ultramarine and the Hansa Yellow Light. And I can get some beautiful, more blue tones, say for like mountains or shrubbery or flowers, you know, um, some very nice variety. So look at all these green shades that we got just from using four colors. So the warm and cool yellow and the warm and cool blue. Isn't that cool? And you can adjust the ratios of these colors. Like for this mixture, for instance, let me add a little bit more of the new Gamboge. So this is new Gamboge and French Ultramarine Blue. And I can get like a super grassy, bright green. And I can even add a little more of that new Gamboge and really brighten it up. So it is like a very, like not quite toxic yellow or toxic green color, but like a very nice grass green. And then I could go really crazy with the other mixture using the Hansa Yellow light and the phalo blue green shade and I can get there we go that's like our almost neon-y shade bright green so like you can have so many different mixtures of greens just with those four colors and then to make it even more fun if I wanted to tone down some of this crazy green here and this is the phalo green shade and the Hansa Yellow Light again, I could actually take some of my warm red. So I have two, the two cool colors here that I'm mixing together and that's this super bright color. So I'm going to take a warm red and that is actually going to neutralize it a little bit and a little bit more. 
because red and green are opposite on the color wheel, so they are gonna cancel each other out, and look at this nice, super earthy green that I can get. Now that may look a little bit like a pukey color to you, but I think it's very pretty. And then if I wanna add a little bit more of the phalo blue green shade back in, I can punch that back up and get like a more earthy version of that crazy bright green. This one right here. So you can see, hopefully, that just with those four colors and then adding in the red, you know, you can really get a lot more color variety. And just to expand on just greens alone, I mean, I can do a whole video on greens, but say that I wanted to take this mixture of the New Gamboge and the French ultramarine blue and I wanted to add some of my cool red to it so this is the quinacridone rose and just a touch because it's a bit of a crazy color and I can get some nice more neutralized like murky greens which could be kind of fun there we go yeah some gorgeous like murky greens you can go ahead Look at that. And this leans more towards like a gray. So even without the neutral tint stuff, there are ways to make these colors gray out and you know darken and make some darks. In fact, let me go ahead and try to mix a dark for you guys real quick without using black. So if I wanted to do that, I want phalo, quinacridone. the red, the blue. So if I wanted a really nice punchy dark, I can do that and that makes a gorgeous dark violet. Which in some scenarios could act as my black. So now that we mix some greens, hope you're getting excited about some basic color mixing here. I want to show you what happens when I add in some of the burnt sienna. Now I could do a whole video on like just color mixing with this set, um, but for the sake of time and for, uh, for this particular video, I'm going to keep it really brief. But I'm going to show you real quick why I recommend burnt sienna. And Daniel Smith's burnt sienna is this gorgeous, very like almost a bit like a pale brick red kind of color and I can't remember the pigment number offhand but I will stick it on the screen if I remember it um, and I like it because it's so nice and transparent and so versatile some of the other burnt siennas that I use like this one is by Windsor and Newton so I'll just pop that in there real or no 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 I am mistaken. I picked up the wrong color. Hold on. Oh, never mind. No, that was the right color. <laughs> so this is a Burnt Sienna by Windsor Newton. So it leans more towards orange, where the Daniel Smith one is definitely more neutral. And I kind of like that. Although, again, you might see a range between these. This color here is actually a Van Dyke Brown, and that's another neutral. If you don't like an orangey neutral like Burnt Sienna, like you're just totally against it and you hate it, Van Dyke Brown is a brown uh, pigment blend that is really nice for doing some of the same things. But I'm going to take this Burnt Sienna, and I'm going to add some French Ultramarine Blue and show you this beautiful neutralized dark. Look at that, it's gorgeous. And the nice thing is once you learn how to mix some of these colors together with the right ratio, you can get a variety of gorgeous, very clean colors. And what I mean by clean color is color that is vibrant and not mixed with a lot of pigments. Because the more pigments that you mix together, the muddier your paints are usually gonna get. Um, that's like the basic rule, especially with watercolor. Um, so this is just a really great mix. So even if I didn't have the neutral tint, which I will pull out real quick to show you, this is the neutral tint. You can see it definitely leans 
more blue. If I did not have this paint, like say that I was really paring down my budget and I just wanted to get a split primary set and one neutral, I could still get very close to that color with just burnt sienna and the French ultramarine. Like, look at that. And this is the beauty of color mixing right here. So this one is the Daniel Smith neutral tint. And this is burnt sienna, Daniel Smith burnt sienna and French ultramarine mixed together. Isn't that gorgeous? So enough fangirling about that. <laughs> I also want to show you how to mix a few nice little violets first because you may be looking at this and being like, okay, Sydney, like I have a bunch of these colors, but how do I mix like a great purple that I'm doing for a painting? And I will show you. So I prefer to start with my French ultramarine blue, and then I'm going to actually take some of my Pyrrhal Scarlet and start with this violet. And this is a more blue leaning color, but look how pretty it is. And that's like a more blue violet, but say that I wanted to mix something even brighter and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the quinacridone rose here and the phthalo blue green shade. And I'm going to be getting a super, super duper bright and vibrant violet. So there's your great purple. There's splash water everywhere. So that is your great purple. And there's so much flexibility with, with just this palette. Like if I wanted to redden up this mixture, you know, I could get some really nice shades in there. And if I wanted to redden this one up, I can get some very bright, punchy shades there as well. I could even add some red to that and get some beautiful, like, mauve shades. There, I mix a little bit of the other stuff in. And if I wanted to get even fancier with that, I could add just a touch of burnt sienna. Not enough red sienna. Yeah, there we go. And get more of like a, a bricky kind of color. So the last thing that I want to show you is a little bit why I like to include the neutral tint. Because I haven't really worked too much with that yet. Another great like power couple of colors is the burnt sienna and the neutral tint. So I'm going to show you real quick what happens when I mix those. So when I mix these two together, you can see immediately that it's still pretty pretty colorful it's not like a boring gray it definitely leans more towards a brown but that's a really nice dark to have and the nice thing about the neutral tint and why it's called neutral tint is while it does definitely lean like more towards a blue color like a Payne's gray it tends to not muddy up too many colors when you are trying to darken something so if I wanted to take this quinacridone rose, take that over here, and I'm just like, this color is way too bright. Like, how do I neutralize this? I can take a little bit of this neutral tint and darken it, and that creates this beautiful, beautiful color here, which is, again, kind of leaning towards a warm violet. But the nice thing is, and I'll compare this real quick, even though it does definitely tone it down, it doesn't completely kill the color. So if I was gonna mix that color with black, so I'm gonna take that and then take a little bit of my lamp black here, which has been ignored throughout this video. If I mix those two together, you can see that I definitely get like a black color, but it's not as vibrant. So it definitely is more muted. And I'm gonna scoop this up so you can see. So this is our, our mixture here. So this is Lamp Black and Quinacridone Rose. And it's still a beautiful dark, but if you want something super bright and punchy, you're probably not gonna go for the Lamp Black, you're gonna go for the neutral tint. 
there are lots of things you can do with this particular palette. So if you would like to see me dive deeper into like all the color mixes you can get with it, or at least most of them because color <laughs> can be infinite. If you're a beginner in watercolor, you're looking to buy a set of watercolors, again, I really, <laughs> I can't, you know, promote this set more with a couple add-on colors because of the versatility of it. And Daniel Smith is one of my favorite brands of watercolors as a professional. And for beginners, the better quality materials you use, the more fun you're going to have in general. Um, and you're not going to be as frustrated with them. So I do highly recommend them. I'm not sponsored, <laughs> but I wish I was because um, they're gorgeous paints. Anyway, guys, I hope that that video was helpful for you and got to see some cool color combinations today. Please leave a comment below if this has helped you or if you have any other suggestions for people looking to buy paints. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.